What's up guys, welcome back to Gabriel Aguiar Prod and as usual we got something crazy and today it's a sci-fi shield. I'm recreating this tutorial that I made a while back but this time we go more in depth. This is an hard one but I'm gonna try my best to explain you how you can achieve this that you are seeing. We are going to need the mesh, a texture, a shader and some code. I hope you enjoy it and if you want to get access to this project and many many others that you can use in your games, it's all available in my Patreon page. And without further ado, let's see how to create a sci-fi shield. And by the way guys, I'm using Unity 2021.2 because there is a special feature that we are going to need in VFX Graph. Oh, and in the package manager, make sure you have Visual Effect Graph installed and Shader Graph. And then go to edit and in preference in visual effects you have experimental operator slash blocks turned on so you unlock some extra features of visual effect graph. And would you look at that, this is what we are going to create something similar, a sci-fi shield. And the first thing we need is a mesh, a 3D object. In my case I used Blender and I can show you how you can do it. We can start by selecting everything and delete so we can have an empty scene and then press Shift A to add an icosphere. In this left bottom panel, we can increase the subdivision to 3, that should be enough. And now the trick is to add a subdivision modifier. And if you look closer, we got the pentagons and hexagons going on, but we have a few vertices that we don't need. So let's apply this subdivision first modifier. And now with Tab, we can enter in Edit mode, and with Control Tab, you can choose vertex for the select mode and we simply need to select one of these vertices and then with shift G we can say select similar amount of connecting edges. All of the similar vertices are selected now, super useful. We can press delete and choose dissolve vertices. Nice. We can do the same for the pentagons. Select one, press shift G, amount of connecting edges, press delete and select dissolve vertices. Great. Let's do the same for these vertices as well, we don't need them. We have our mesh at least the beginning. Our next step is the UV maps, it's super important, otherwise it will not work properly. I'm gonna drag a new window down here and up here I'm going to select UV editor. Press tab to enter in edit mode and you can press U to select unwrap. You will get something like this, that is not what we need. The trick here is to go to the UV tab and in the UV maps, drop down menu, we can delete this UV map and then press U again and select unwrap and this time it will unwrap properly. But they are overlapping so we need to separate them. Press Ctrl Tab to select faces, select one pentagon and then use the same technique with Alt G but this time we are going to say select similar area and it will select all the pentagons. Super easy and so useful. And now with G we can drag them to more or less around here. And now it's simply a matter of fitting both the hexagons and the pentagons in the UV area. Okay, once you got something like this, I'm actually going to save this directly to my Unity project. Rename this to Shield, save. Okay, let's just rename this mesh, Shield01 for example. And lastly we need to separate all of these faces. In edit mode, let's select everything, press Alt M and we can split faces by edges. Great, exactly what we need so we can play with this in the shader that we are going to create in Unity. And yeah, we need a texture for this so let's go to UV up here and down here export UV layout. For the size 2048 by 2048 is more than enough. And then you can save this PNG. Now we can go to an image editing software, this time I'm going to use Krita. So this is the UV layout we get, we can drag this image to Krita or to another image editing software. Now the idea is to create a new layer and in this new layer we are going to create an highlight for the edges. In Krita it's done by selecting the brush first, adjusting the brush, for example I'm using this one, which I think is in the paint section, yeah the first one, and I'm going to decrease the fade to zero, so it fades nicely. And for the size, around 140 pixels, 180, along those values, it's enough. Now the trick is to use the polyline tool. 
Now it's simply a matter of highlighting these edges of the hexagons and then of the pentagons. Once you have that done, you can actually create a new layer. Decrease the brush size to 20, 30. And on the new layer, we are going to highlight once again the edges. I'm going to hide the other layer first. OK, so I like this. The idea is to create a brighter edge. And then in the first layer we created, with the big brush size, I'm going to decrease the opacity to around 50, 60. And that's it. We get a nice highlight of the edges. By the way, you can also leave the UV layout texture, but decrease the opacity to 20, something super low. But that's basically it. Now let's export this as a PNG file. I'm going to save this to my Unity project directly. And here we are in Unity now. So we have the mesh and the texture. The shield, we can drag it to our scene. I'm going to push it a little bit up and we can start working on the shader finally. So with right click, I'm going to create in shader graph. You can create a blank shader graph or a lit shader graph. Rename it to shield shader, double click to open it up. In the graph inspector for the targets, you can use visual effect and set the material to lit so you can have shadows. But this will not work with VFX graph if you are using a lower version than this one, which is 2021.2. Because now in VFX graph, we can use lit objects in the universal render pipeline. And we also don't need to say visual effect. Now we simply need the universal target and then down here we can turn on support VFX graph. Pretty cool. Now make sure it's lit. We are going to need this to be transparent and in additive blending mode. And the render face it's basically if it is two-sided or not. And yes, we want both faces to be rendered. The front one and the back one. We are going to create a nice effect for that. In fact, we are going to create two colors, one for the front faces and the other color for the back faces. So front color and back color. And then we need a texture 2D for the main texture. Basically the texture we created with the pentagons and hexagons. So for the colors, we can set them to HDR and choose a white color with alpha at 100%. That's the default value we want to start with and the main text that we can select, the text that we just created, right? First, we want to multiply the main text with the colors, but we need to sample the text first. And we can actually only multiply with the front color. And connect this to the base color. And let's see this in action already. Let's save this shader, press Save Asset button. And then we right click in our shader, we can select Create Material and simply drag and drop this material to our shield 3D model. And would you look at that? We are starting to see something. And that's it, guys. <laughs> no, just kidding. So we need to distinguish between the front faces and the back faces. It's very simple. We got a node called Ease Front Face. It's basically a Boolean. With this, we can use a branch, basically an if. If it's front face, then we can connect this multiply. If it's back face, you can multiply the back color with the main texture and connect it to the false. And this is going to be connected to the base color. Let me make some room. Okay, so if it's front face, render the front color. If not, render the back color. Once you save this, if, for example, we choose a blue color for the front color, and now we are able to, for example, say that the back faces are red. Why not? Let's just take care of the alpha. We simply need to multiply these two multiply nodes from the front and the back color, split this and connect the A, which is the alpha, to the alpha input of the fragment function, save it and we get transparency. This now allows us, for example, to increase by a lot the intensity of the front color, while the back color can have something less intense. Great. Now, another thing I used for the shield shader is a Fresnel node. So let's add a Fresnel color, HDR, white, opacity at 100. 
and the float for the Fresnel power, default value of 2. Down here with spacebar we can search for Fresnel effect, connect the power and multiply it with the final color. This right here can be connected to the emission. And if we save it, we can, for example, choose a purple. But what is happening now is that we are adding Fresnel to the front and the back faces. And we actually don't want that, we just want to add to the front faces. Otherwise, everything will be emissive. So, let's use the is front face boolean, connect it to a branch, and well, if it is front face, then add the Fresnel. If it's not, leave it as it is. Connect from this multiply node, and this is going to the emissive. Save it, and here we go. This allows us now to play with this color and with the final power, create a nice shield, a really cool futuristic shield. You know, just play with this, it's awesome. Let's just create a group for these nodes and call it Fresnel because now up here we are going to take care of the vertex animation. We are going to make this breathable, like it's breathing. For that we need the position node, but in object space. Basically each face position. And to that we are going to add a value, something. What we are going to add here is information from the normal vector, which is a perpendicular vector from each face. And we can slide each face along that normal vector. But we need to say that the space of the normal vector is object once again, and then we can multiply this by a vector tree, basically a vertex amount, how much we want to offset this. And connect to the add and connect to the position of the vertex function of the shader. If you save it, go to the inspector and play with this, you will notice that we are able to indeed offset each face according to their normal vector. But this is manually. We need to animate this throughout time so it looks like it's pretty. So anytime we need something animated in shadow terms, we need the time node, basically. So let's go get it and multiply this not by speed but by vertex frequency, a float, default value of 1, because we are going to connect this to a sine wave, looks like this. This sine wave, as you can see, it is blinking slowly because the frequency is only one. We can multiply our normal vector to this and replace the connection to the add. Let me just organize this a little bit. Okay. So now, once you save this and once you increase the vertex amount, you get a breathing shield. It's magic and it's awesome. You can also increase the frequency so it breathes a little bit faster. But now let's have a quick overview of how you can use this with Visual Effect Graph. For those who want to know how to use it in the particle system, the Shuriken, I made a tutorial a while back that will certainly help you. Links in the description. So right click, create Visual Effect Graph, rename it, drag it to the scene and open with the edit button. And the cool thing with Unity 2021.2 is that down here in the output particle, we can output lit mesh, which means we can create effects influenced by light, effects with 3D objects. In fact, if you select this output in the inspector, you will notice we have a cast shadows. In our case, we don't need this because we have a shader graph that we created, and in there we told it to receive and cast shadows. Alright, so the idea now is to copy the values that you created for the other shader, the values from this material. Once you have copied those values, there is a bunch of things that we can do. For example, we don't need velocity, the lifetime can be 5 seconds, and, and we want a burst of only one particle instead of the constant spawn rate. And it's useful to use this in VFX graph, because now down here we can control the size with a set size, set to 1, and then animate how it grows, with a set size over life. Just make sure the composition is in multiply mode and now you can literally use this curve to control if the shield grows in the beginning, if it bounces and so on. And you get something like this. You want to fade it towards the end, you can use a sample gradient 
for the time you can feed the age of the particle and then simply create a gradient where for example the last key is black so it fades out you can do the same for the fresno color and you get this interesting effect there's many things you can do obviously now to detect collisions the complicated part in the shader you need a sphere mask with these three properties multiply it with the alpha and then connect it to a branch so you can choose in VFX graph if you want or not to use the sphere mask then you can duplicate the existing VFX graph because this one is for the ripples the collision effect which means you need to turn on use sphere mask and you need a vector tree property for the sphere center leave the shader with the same settings same size do not use the size of our life and use a short lifetime oh and use a color different from the shield color in my case an orange to contrast with the blue then create a prefab out of this vfx graph simply drag and drop it to a folder add a rigid body with no gravity and in this case i turn on constraints we also need a sphere collider with more or less the same size of the shield and a script to spawn the ripples this script right here it will detect if an object with a bullet tag hit the shield and then it will spawn the ripples prefab get the visual effect component and assign the collision point to the sphere center property which means now you only need to create a prefab out of the shield ripples and assign it to the script of the shield and now basically any object with a bullet tag will spawn the ripples and set the sphere mask center to the collision point and that's how you create a sci-fi shield or any other shield actually this was an hard one i hope you guys have enjoyed it if you want to get access to this project and many others you can support me on my patreon page which is very much appreciated i actually want to thank every patron for supporting me and as usual a special quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons which are Alak Frost, Bradford Aaron, David Krug, David Mike Lars, Derek Benson, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Goblin Plague, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Lakim Fung, Maxim, Madav Gupta, Mograf Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Ovi Sands, Playermon Space, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Roger Powers, Ryan, Stefan, Stefan Zarkov, Unknown Enigma, Verisuta, Zared Redding, and Ingu Daz. Really appreciate your support guys, it really helps to keep the channel going. I hope everyone who watched this video enjoyed, like, subscribe, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!